Shalom to you all. Shalom, shalom, shalom. My apology. My very apology. I'm here lit. Shalom to you all. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are connecting, wherever you are watching from, may God be with you in the name of Jesus. I greet you in the, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom. Happy Sunday. Happy New Week. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare your week, your days are blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to flow with the word of God. I always come to you with the good news. And that good news is the word of God. God said, heaven and earth will depart, but my word will stand forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We're talking about lawlessness. If I'm rushing too much, my apology too. Oh, Lord. Lawlessness. We learn that lawlessness is someone, a person who would have no regard, who doesn't care about others, only about themselves, selfish. They only think about themselves. Once they are happy, once they are good, once they are satisfied in what they are doing, that is fine with them. Or, or any other person, it's none of their business. Lawlessness. And the word and it says that everyone who practices sin practice lawlessness. Whatever you know that is not right, you practice, you are doing. Especially when the spirit of God in you, because every human being has the Holy Spirit, which is the one that leads us. I call it your conscience. And it tells you this is not right. And you say, I don't care, I move on with what I know that is right for me. And you know that it's not right. You practice sin. And I always say sin leads to the death. The result of sin is death. Adam and Eve was created not to die. But when the sin committed the sin, what follow? They die. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 25 says, The stains of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Mm-hmm. The law is to guide us, to direct us, for us to know our limit, not to go beyond. Sometimes law is meant to break. Did you break the law for good reason? One of my family usually said that when you want to steal, steal. So steal a good steal. When they're killing you, when you get out of the jail, you are no more a poor person anymore. You are a different person. Don't steal that when you when they caught you, they say, Is it this small this thing that is the reason this person steal? Are you sure they stole? You want to steal, steal. You want to break the law. You break the law for a good reason. One day, one of my the doctor, my my former work. And the doctor was the wife was telling me how when her ex-husband who died passed away, the, the son have to break the law of the traffic light. Because where he was, he heard that your father is in emergency and he knew his father's health condition. He ran every red light. This boy break the red light. Keep on going. The police was chasing and he's going. They got him at the hospital. When they met him, they know. They found out the reason he was breaking the law. I we break law for a good reason or you just do it because I don't care. I just do it. I do it for stupid reason. Hallelujah. May God help us to be to do a good things in the name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24 to 25 says, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we may be justified by him. Hallelujah. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us, me, you, free from the law of sin and death. It says, sin lead to death. That's not my portion. That's not your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. When Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? He moved to his children. Can kill Abel, sin. That's how sin started. 
And from there, the man God created said, death will never see you because of disobedience, because of not following God's law, break God's law. They ate the forbidden fruit. What happened? They sinned against God and they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden before you know it, they have to die. And it carries on. Because he said, because of for one man since for the whole universe, the earth, the same somebody now came and said, I am the resurrection, no more death. Jesus came to give us life. And that is our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Question one asks, is the law of God the internal and unchangeable standard of his government? And I go to the book of Psalm 1117 verse 8. And that answered my question that's asked. All his prospects are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. God's plan for me and you, everything God's do for me and you on this earth, in this universe, they all stand forever and ever. He was anger before he destroyed them with flood. But this time he said, I will not destroy what I created. What I created, I spent my time because of human beings. Did God was anger? Did God dirigent to create us? Yes, God, he, he, he was disappointed. Said the man I made on my image, do not listen to me. It does not follow my law. That's why he gave us choice in a book of Matthew. You cannot serve two masters. Now you have to choose is your choice is my choice. I pray we choose the best one. Son. 98 verse 34 says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my mouth. Lord said, the word that I speak will not come back to me. It will not return to me on a void. It must, it will accomplish what it was spoke for. I'll take you to the book of Psalm, Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 11. Pay attention to 11. Because that's where what I wanted to say is coming from. It says, Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, uh, nor are my ways your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And 10 said, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, water do not return there, but water the earth, that it may bring seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 11 said, 11 says, So shall my word be that goes out forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me a void, but it sh shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the time, in the ten for which I send it. The word of God would not return on a void, it would not return back to him. That's why he say is an unchangeable, changeable God. Even when God is to punish somebody because of disobedience, breaking the law, the law of God is his, um, I would say the Ten Commandments. Obey the word of God. Obey what God wants you to do. When we disobey, you may say, okay, I will not do this or I will punish you this way. Then you weep yourself, bring yourself low to God and cry to God. God will forgive you, but he will not forgive it completely. That's why he says he's an unchangeable, changeable God. He will forgive, but it depends on your sin because everything, it says in the Bible that all sins are equal. All sins are not equal. Because he will also say that 
the sins, unforgiving sin, a sin that God will not forgive is when you sin against the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? When you're doing something, Holy Spirit whispering to you, telling you, this is not right. Do not do this. You say, mm, whatever. Your conscience is battling with you. It's hard for you. You took time to think about it, but you say, anyhow, I don't care. I do it. I mean, you know it's not the right thing to do. You sin against the Holy Spirit. It's unforgiving. It's not forgived. It will not forgive you. Do not try not to sin against the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. God's law is the basis of the government. It was established to ensure the peace order harmony and unity of the universe the law of god the law of god is to help us to live in peace in unity in order to be in order if you organize what you need to do in your day it goes freely if you're going for business or whatever, or you own a business, you prepare yourself, you put everything to align in order, position everything, it flow freely. But when everything is not organized, the days are messed up. That's why if you send forth your resume today, one of the things they will ask, organizable, especially if you're going for being um, a customer service, are you organized? It's one of the requirements there. Put us in order to live in harmony, love, peace, unity in the universe. That's why I said the, ten, the, the law we have on universe in every society, Ten Commandments is there. If you want, try it. Go and go through the law. Read it. Pay attention to it. You will see. You will find some of them. There is ten commandments in it. A broken law brings sorrow, suffering, bondage, and death. When people broke the law, what happened? Are they in peace? Is everything going well? Some people, you find them in jail. Some people, you find them in prison. They have one problem to the other. In home, when people don't follow problems all the time, when kids are not listening, that's why he says, I pray for your children. Always pray for them. Lay hand on them. Commit them into the hand of God. Don't just, oh, I give them food. Oh, I give them, they wear good clothes. They eat well. God said, train your children the way you will grow. When they grow, they will not depart from that thing. If you trade them in the fear of God, when they grow, they will not depart from it. Even when the enemy comes to steal them. Because that's their work, is to steal, to destroy, and to kill. They will fight, but they will not win. Because the child is already committed to the hand of God. is in the palms of God. God said, he's a lion. You will never touch a lion, whether the lion sleeping. You cannot touch their tail. Whether it's a baby lion sleeping or a mommy lion, a father lion, brother, sister lion sleeping, you dare not touch them. What is in the hand of lion, you cannot take it away from them. You cannot take anything that is in the hand of God. God is the lion. Jesus is the lion of Judah. Tribe of Judah, we call it. Hallelujah. Amen. Question four ask. Let's hear what the question four said. To what does the Bible compare the law? To what extent? What extent the Bible compare the law of God? Hallelujah. What extent? To what does the Bible compare it? Let's hear what it says in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. I read. It says, Get your Bible, King James. King James, that's where our Bible is coming from. Study is coming from. That's where the word of God is coming from. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't have it, download it. So you flow with me. And make sure you go through the verse. That's why I give you the verse. I give you the question. I give you the verse. You sit down in your quiet time. 
and go through it because we have time in to deal with social media facebook youtube tutoring name it all of them but the problem is that we don't have time to spend time with god why we don't have time to spend time with the person that the god that gave us the breath of life he has the keys of our life he can take it anytime like i always said i don't care how many people who follow me how many people who views who views what i have on youtube on facebook i don't care how many people who likes me one thing i want and I will love so much is when God will say, oh, good deed, my daughter. You have done well. That's the person to, to congratulate me. Because the word of God that I give, so many people don't want to hear. They see the white, they sweep it and go to social media. You have time for social media. Some people don't even sleep. But you don't have time for the word of God. Even when God sends you someone. To bring the word of God to you. You, you don't want to listen to it. You never know if it was God. If it's for you. When God. Somebody bring the word of God to you. It's no coincidence. God have a reason. There's something that God wants to talk to you about. There's something he wants to speak to you. But you need to free yourself. You need to free yourself. And listen to it. Some people, I hear some people say, hey, that's bullshit, waste of time. The word of God is a waste of time. But that is where you will find yourself. You need God mercy. You need God grace to intervene in your life. Jesus said, if you are not ashamed of me to speak my word, I will not be ashamed of you when you need me. But if you are ashamed of me, if you had a shame of me to speak, mention my name, speak my word, deliver my word, I'll be, when the time comes, I will tell you, I don't know who you are. And that's not our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God said, you do not wait for the whole universe, a congregation, a gathering of people to come and ordain you an evangelist before you speak the word of God. For every child of God to me is an evangelist. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the question four. The answer comes from the book of James chapter 1 verse 23 to 25. And it says, I read, For if anyone is a hearers of the word and not a doer he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself goes away for he observes his his himself goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does what is he trying to say a man that look at themselves in the mirror a man a man who who hears of the word of god and not doing the word he is like you hear the word of God as I'm giving you the word of God. Now you're hearing it, but it goes to your right. A flight to your ear, to your left. It's nothing to you. You see it, you move down to something that is funny. You don't want to hear. You don't want to listen to it. At least you heard it. Because Jesus said, every human being you hear it. You say, oh, you are not. This one is a waste of time. You don't listen to the word of God. If you listen to the word of God, as, as, as often as you listen to the word of God, it will help you. Then it will start getting into you. You will start thinking about it. You will start meditating. It. It's gradually, gradually. It's, it's not one day thing. It's not like social media that where you, you watch a funny things, funny dance, funny move, funny, you know. No, it's a different case. 
He said the rose of God is narrow. It's like a needle when you want to put thread inside a needle to sew. Very tiny, but very powerful. Nobody sees it. People don't see it. But people see the things that does not help us in life. That's what we love so much. So bright. Hallelujah. So what is he saying here in the book of James? Is the answering the answer is saying that any man who is the hearers of the word, not the doers of the word, is like somebody who, like me and you. We wake up, we want to go out, we go to the mirror, we dress up, we say we look good. We observe ourselves. But when we depart from that mirror, we don't even know how we look like. Because after a few minutes, you get some greasy in your face. Sun will hit you. Everything starts going down, especially if you have makeup. A woman, you understand what I'm saying. They started the fade. Everything started going away. When you shower, give yourself a few minutes. You look different. Because greasy start coming. Dust start coming into your body. Entering into your body. It's like the person. It goes away immediately. They forget the kind of person they are. But the person who look into the word. Into the perfect law. And follow the law. Hallelujah. Follow the law. Do the right thing. Even if nobody sees it at that time, that will be time for everything that God said in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is a time for everything. When the time comes, that thing you see that nobody sees what you do. One day God will make it known to people that this person deserved that. And you will be surprised. Why am I here? It's what you have done in the past. You do not remember. Hallelujah. Amen. The blessing will come when the time is set up. When God assigns it. Hallelujah. The law is a mirror that enables us to see ourselves. To recognize our need of saving grace. It helps us. Back in those days, people love grace. And they love the instrument that they will use to connect whatever they can lay hand on. Especially one of them is oil. There is no back in those days. If you read from the book of Genesis, as it was going down. Old Testament, all Old Testament, they sacrifice, they do a lot of sacrifice, burn offering, seed offering, forgiveness sacrifice, so many. And all of them has to do with oil, olive oil. What am I trying to say this is about the last one that said in those days, in the it says that our needs is like a mirror. The word of God is a mirror to us. It's a mirror to help us to recognize what we need, it helps us to align with God, what we are doing to cut limits, to know our limit, the law. That's why we have law. Yes, some people say they break the law. Law is there to be break. Do you break law for a good reason or you just break it for your own reason that does not make no sense, that will not even benefit you? There's somebody in our family when he was advising us, he says, when you want to steal, steal, so when you get out of the mess, you'll be a, a different person. You will not suffer in life again. Don't steal because you just want to steal. When you break law, break the law. And when you break the law, it was a good reason. When people hear it, they'll say, ah, I see the reason this person talk like this. I see the reason why this person react like this. I see the reason this person do this. In my former work, the doctor I was working for, this doctor, the wife is very close to me. It's like a mother to me. One day she was telling me a story about her ex-husband who passed away. She told me the, one day, the day, one day the son had that the father is in the hospital. This, the son break the law of the traffic lights. He got so many tickets that day. 
because he knew his father had condition and the moment he heard that he's in the hospital for emergency he breaks the law he drove like every, every red light he doesn't care he go after it. the police police followed him to the hospital when they followed him to the hospital they found the reason he broke the law he was in tears by the time he got there his dad is already passed away the tickets they were to give to him they cancel all the ticket he broke the law in a right way but it's not good because he could hit somebody it could cause an accident and kill someone else but he did it for a reason, for his father. But I'm not saying you should do that. Because that could cause a big problem that day. Hallelujah. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The children of Israel, Moses. Moses gave the children of Israel law to keep them. In remembrance of God's, of God and their duties towards him. Moses gave them laws and the law must give them came from God. It's not Moses who wrote it on his own. He didn't make it up. What God tell him is what he wrote. The law God gave Moses is the Kenten commandment. He gave it to them to remain, to remind them about God and to help them to keep them abide with God. The law of God was to make them free and to keep them free. That was the reason God gave them the Ten Commandments. Keep them with God. Remind them about God and their duties towards God. Keep them free. And help them to know that they are free from any bondage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. I love God. God declared that the Israelites were his own people. And that they must listen to God and obey his law. This law were the Ten Commandments which were given to Moses. One on two stone, two stone tablets, and they set out the basic principle that would govern the Israelites' lives. That's the Ten Commandment is the law. Are we able to obey the law on our own? No. Can anybody on this earth say that, oh, I keep all the Ten Commandments? Mm -mm. But the grace of God, we do some, but we ask God for mercy and help us. Because one way or the other, nobody on this earth can keep the Ten Commandments law. Hallelujah. God's law is the basis of his government. It was established to ensure the peace. For us to live in peace, order, harmony, unity of universe. Breaking the law brings so many sorrow. Breaking the laws brings so many suffering, bondage. Hallelujah. But we human beings don't care. Some people, they take it so granted. Even they even give in laws that you're not supposed to keep. Even when you're trying to, you look at, the, you listen, you look at yourself, look at the law. You said, no, this one does not align with God. Those ones, if you are the one I'm talking to, break it. Because I will break it. If a law that does not align with God, and you say, oh, God said, that shall not uh, hate somebody, call somebody evil. Even Jesus called them that those ones are evil. Say bad thing when somebody do bad, you tell them they do bad because Jesus God Jesus said, Say the truth, and the truth will set you free. Say the truth, let the truth set you free. If somebody give a law that you know that does not align with God, and that's why we always fall back when somebody gives law, we fall back to the word of God. 
See, if this align with God or just for their own benefit or the, for the benefit for others, is it aligned with God? You obey. But if it doesn't align with God, I don't think it's the right thing to do because you also sin. You will sin against God. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We stop here today. Tomorrow we're carrying on question, carrying on the grace, the role of grace tomorrow is is also included on this law what is the grace the role of grace and law of god in the name of jesus amen let's pray heavenly father we thank you oh god we bless your holy name mighty jesus we give you all the glory we give you all the honor we give you all the direction we give you all things thank you for your word for you said your word that you speak will not return to you on a void Hallelujah. Jehovah, I pray. May your word direct us, lead us, help us to abide with you. And you abide with us. In the name of Jesus, help us to be the doers of your word, not the hearers of your word. For you said, the doers of your word, there is a blessing that comes with it. Oh God, everything any child of God does that align with God always come with the blessing. Lord, I pray tonight. I pray this hour of the day. Help us. Help us to meditate with your word. Help us to follow your word. And help us to be an obedient child of God. Children of God. For you have given us the law. We cannot do it on our own. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Abba Father. Open the gates of heaven. Let it rain upon us. Let it rain. Let the mercies of God rain. Let the grace to keep the Lord of God rain upon the children of God. And all the children of God said, Amen. Thank you. Shalom. Have yourself a great day in Jesus' name.